Welcome to Food Innovators by Food Apps. Thank you. Who are you? My name is Ashley, and I'm the CEO and founder of Barley Notes. Oh my God. Uh, this, normally when I ask people who they are, they give me their name, and then they spend 20 minutes without stopping talking about their company like it's letting the floodgates out. Barley and Oats. Yes. Where do people find out about Barley and Oats? You can find us at barleynotes.com. Is that with an ampersand or with an A? Nope, spelled out A-N-D. So B-A-R-L-E-Y, mm -hmm. A-N-D. A -N -D. O -A -T -S. O -A -T -S. Dot com. Dot com. Okay. And what is it? So we're a meal delivery service for mom. And we're different than any other service out there. Just for one mom or any mom? Any mom. So we, we focus on nutrition for maternal health and field development from conception through breastfeeding. So we're talking about fertility and, and pregnancy, uh, we're talking about postpartum recovery, we're talking about healthy milk supply, as well as impact on the baby. So the way the baby develops in the womb um, and outside the womb when he's taking the mother's milk. Okay, so as a non-mother, mm -hmm. and I, I can't even claim to be a woman, I, I'm not sure, uh, some of those senses, some of those words which you ran through very quickly sort of went over, not, I don't, not necessarily went over my head, but just sort of, I was sort mm -hmm. of trying to figure out exactly what that sentence means. Let's break it down. Okay. It's would-be mums. Would-be mums, current mums. Current mums, mm -hmm. and recently... And seasoned mums. And recently made mums. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, and you're giving them uh, meal deliveries mm -hmm. of what? Fully prepared food that's extremely micronutrient-dense. So Extremely micronutrient-dense. Right. Now, micronutrients are basically the word used for vitamins and minerals. Okay. So they're really heavy in all those nutrients below the heavy? line. Heavy? They're heavy? No, heavy... They're, they're functional. Let's call them functional. Um, so they're every delicious. calorie I'm counts. I'm not a mother and basically. I drive them and they're delicious. Oh, they're absolutely fantastic. Um, but there, there's no empty calories there. Every calorie is fully functional. So we really focus on those nutrients below the line. Below so no, not, not lots of sugars, not lots of processed stuff. Yeah, we use no refined sugar. So all of our sweeteners are, are natural. We use things like coconut nectar or maple syrup when we do have to sweeten things. Okay. So micronutrient nutrient dense. Mm -hmm. So it's giving them everything they need to... Mm -hmm. So to support conception, to support a healthy pregnancy, help carry the baby to term and fully develop in the womb, to support postpartum recovery, so you lose a lot of vitamins and minerals in the birthing process that right. mom needs to replenish, and if she doesn't, she's at risk for things like postpartum depression, low energy, etc., cetera, um, as well as breastfeeding. So breastfeeding requires a um, certain caloric intake as well as a certain nutrient intake to have the highest quality and quantity of breast milk. Okay, so I'm guessing as a species, we've, we, we've been pretty good at this whole eating thing, otherwise, you know, we wouldn't still be here. Yeah, well, um, up until about the last hundred years, we've been pretty good at it. Oh, really? So, What's been happening in the last hundred years, from your point of view? Well, you've seen a rise in industrial agriculture and, and um, genetic modification and the standard American diet, which is really heavy on processed carbs and sugar, and you're seeing a rise in these preventable diseases like diabetes. And that's impacting mothers? And obesity, absolutely. Yeah, it's impacting all Americans, but some of them happen to be mothers. Okay, so how is the current, let's say for example a woman gets, pre uh, gets pregnant mm -hmm. and, and obviously you guys focus on the before the pregnancy, making right. sure that they're getting the nutrients they need to mm -hmm. be optimized if you like for, for conception. But let's say for example new mother, why, why can't they just continue the diet they're on? Right, so um, if they're on a standard American diet, it's very nutrient poor. So it's lacking a lot of essential vitamins and minerals like your omega-3 fatty acids, that our, our ancestors had a very heavy diet in. So I think it, it was something like 75% omega-3, about 25% omega-6. We've completely reversed that on its head. Um, almost all processed food you have is heavy in omega-6 fatty acids. Omega-3s are really found mostly in like fatty fish and grass-fed um, animal meats, which most Americans don't consume on a very regular basis. Um, so certain things like that can impact fertility, uh, as well as fetal development it's tied to IQ, brain capacity. Um, and then there's all other kinds of nutrients that you hear about, like folate and folic acid. That's the big one. A doctor tells a, a woman to start taking a vitamin uh, when she's trying to conceive. So folate is directly tied to the methylation of genes. So it has to do with the way that genes are expressed in, in your offspring. And other micronutrients tie into that as well. So if a mom has a micronutrient-poor diet, which anybody on the standard American diet does, um, they say that it's about 9 to 10 Americans are micronutrient deficient in at least one or two vitamins and minerals. Um, then there, there's direct impacts of that. So e each micronutrient that's not even required on a nutrition label, but if you do happen to see it on the nutrition label below the fold, has a specific role and function in the body. And it's 
you know, we might not think being deficient in vitamin D is that big of a deal, but when it comes to manufacturing or 3D printing a baby, that vitamin D comes into play in a lot of ways in that baby's development. So trying to make sure that mom is getting all the nutrients she needs in an easy and delicious way. Okay, so let, let's just kind of um, take it to its natural conclusion. Mm -hmm. Mother finds out she's pregnant, she's been looking to become pregnant for some time, weeks, months, yep. maybe longer than that. Mm -hmm. She f suddenly finds out the good news that after all this effort of, uh, well let's not call it effort, but still, uh, all this time with, <laughs> with, with husband, boyfriend, uh, partner, whatever, mm -hmm. she's pregnant. Mm -hmm. She continues with her with a normal American mm -hmm. diet. Mm -hmm. What are some of the consequences of, of not having a micronutrient diet and sticking with the, the kind of traditional right. American diet? Um, so without sounding like Dr. Doom, they've done they've done. Oh, we should probably say that neither of us are doctors. Right? Yeah, so neither of us are doctors. And this is not medical <laughs> advice and to Correct. make sure they talk to their doctors, etc. Right. But so, so there's been studies, um, there's been a lot of studies into something called epigenetics recently where they're studying the way that environmental factors like diet impact um, generations after afterwards. So how, how mom's diet and pregnancy can impact a child into adulthood. Uh, so in one of these studies with these two mice, they fed them different diets. So one of the mice got a, got a traditional nutrient rich diet, one of them got one that was full of processed carbs and sugar, so didn't have a lot of nutrition there. The mice were genetically identical except for their diet. So the, the mouse that was fed these processed sugars in this micronutrient poor diet was at risk for obesity and diabetes later in life. It developed certain cancers and the other the, the other mouse did not. And they repeated this study multiple times with these mice and found the same results. But how does it impact the child? Not just it puts in, the individual. And we right. all know that if you eat lots of processed food, lots of sugars, you you no, This was the child. This is the mouse, sh the mouse babies. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. so, so two mice, both of which are Fed. Right. Yeah, so I should have So their offspring developed obesity, diabetes, okay. and certain Okay, so in other words, right. if, if it translates to the same thing in humans, then that's an if, not yes. a, an absolute certainty. Right. Um, having a regular American diet versus a micronutrient diet mm -hmm. gives your children a, a, a potentially an increased likelihood of certain diseases, certain diseases obesity, mm -hmm. and so on. What about brain development in the womb? What yep, about that as well. Yep, so certain micronutrients like omega-3, like folate, like manganese are directly tied to neural activity and development. So um, IQ size, um, the way that the, the neurons fire in the brain, so a, a lack of manganese can lead to things like behavioral problems like ADHD. Um, what else? Breastfeeding. So breastfeeding is another big one. So breastfeeding is directly tied to a higher IQ in multiple studies with children as well. Um, and if the mother's diet is, is nutrient poor, mm -hmm. the, will, will that hamper? So breast, certain, milk, breast milk production, or it, what, does it just change the quality of the milk? Right. Or none of those things, it's always the same milk. Whatever. Right. So the macronutrient content of the milk, like the carbs, proteins, and fats, will stay relatively the same, regardless of diet. But that micronutrient content will change. So certain micronutrients, like vitamin A, are directly proportionate to the amount that a mom consumes. So if mom's not consuming enough beta carotene or vitamin A in form of uh, retinol, either way that she's getting it, then it's going to decrease the amount of vitamin A in her milk supply. Um, same thing with omega-3 fatty acids, and there's a couple other nutrients that are directly proportionate as well. Okay, so and then it can start. It can also certain micronutrients can also impact the amount of milk that she's able to make. Okay, so diets for mothers, uh, new mothers, uh, or, or rather women who are pre uh, who are pregnant, mm -hmm. it can impact the baby and the mother, of course, in the womb. Right. Can, can mm -hmm. maybe perhaps. I just want to make sure people mm -hmm. are not getting that we're we're doctors. Right. Yeah. Talking about stuff. Yeah. Um, after the baby is born, uh, it can impact the quality of the milk and the milk uh, beneficial uh, mm -hmm. impact on the baby. Right. And even micronutrients aside, um, the mother's diet during breastfeeding can also impact allergy in her child and colic. So things like dairy, like the casein protein in dairy, can impact colic and allergy in the baby. Because babies, when their digestive system is forming, have a really hard time digesting that protein. So if a mom's eating it when the child's system's not really ready to process it, it creates an immune response. It can cause allergic reactions or digestive distress, which usually manifests into colic, where the baby's crying a lot. Wow, so in other words, your ability to get a decent night's sleep mm -hmm. as, a, as a new mom can be impacted by whether or not the baby's getting the right nutrient, yeah. nutrients or not. Even certain B vitamins in utero can impact the baby's sleep quality outside the womb. It's, it's really cool. Because I, 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 the one thing I used to dislike most about the whole 
new baby thing was seeing 4 a.m. on a Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. I think that's a time of mourning that no, no human being right. should ever be expected to experience. Right, and on that note, even uh, nutrients aside, uh, mom is sleep deprived and she, she's exhausted and she's starving, so just giving her an easy way to get her food is just a huge benefit. I was going to ask that question, well, what's wrong yeah. with... Uh, and I'm, I'm sort of playing, I don't want people to listen to this thinking I'm a complete idiot and, I, I, and I'm yeah. like totally immune to how tough it is to be a new mother, but what's to stop her new mother from getting up and making herself a, a decent mm -hmm. meal um, and getting the micronutrients she needs? Why does she need barley and oats to, yeah. get, to, to, to have the food delivered to her front door? Right, so I'm, my, my son actually just turned a year and I don't think I've had a full night's sleep uh, since I was like eight months pregnant probably. Um, so sleep deprivation is huge. It can affect your ability to think straight. There's something called mommy brain where you, you start to forget things all the time um, And you're just exhausted and when you when you when you first re Are recovering from birth and you're first starting to breastfeed the caloric intake that you need is a lot higher So you're starving you're tired. You probably haven't slept when the baby's first starting to nurse when they're learning how to breastfeed It can be a really long process So you could be nursing for up to an hour at a time as the baby's trying to learn how to get the milk and then about you know 60 to 80 minutes later if the baby needs to nurse again because their their stomach's about the size of a marble um, so you're kind of tied to bed you're tied to this baby and, and most women aren't cooking um, not to mention labor it, it's quite a process a lot of women can't walk for a couple weeks very very easily it's painful to get up and stand and be on your feet um, and cook for an hour or two um, so most parents do resort to things like takeout or if they're lucky to have a husband who cooks, maybe he shares some of the workload. The other thing is, um, as we all move for our jobs, live in different locations, we're not necessarily part of a very integrated social society kind of infrastructure. Right. For example, my wife and I are both European, mm -hmm. um, and we don't have a big family network right. where we live. So right. when I went back to work, my wife was almost kind of locked in to right. the home. She didn't have the ability to kind of go out to the supermarket and go shopping for right. an hour, even if she had the energy or the, you know, right. the physical capacity to do that. Right. So, okay, so barley and oats. Right. It's interesting you bring that up too about um, other societies because one of the books I read when I was pregnant, uh, it's called Mother Food, and it explores different cultures and diets around pregnancy and postpartum around the world. And in a lot of other cultures, they have rituals for moms after birth, and they have communities that come together, and they feed these women, and they feed them special diets, and they take, nurture them from an emotional and a physical perspective, and we just don't really have that um, in this country. Um, even even society as a whole, I mean, I mean, women in this country don't get you know paid leave as a national benefit, um, so there's, we have a long way to come. Yeah, in, in, in Europe, I think we ended up having nine months yeah. off. My wife had nine months off for my daughter, which was all paid. Yeah. So in this country, it's what, three months? Zero. No, they have zero. to hold your job for three months. But then, they yeah. don't have to pay you. And they only have to hold your job for three months if the company's over 50 employees. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, let's not get into the politics of that. Uh, okay, so, barley and oats. Mm -hmm micronutrient rich meals um, is it kind of a one month one week so it's a weekly subscription and we offer different options available so you can start with five meals a week which is basically one meal a day Monday through Friday if you are someone who likes to cook or maybe your husband cooks and you just want a supplemental program um, up to 15 meals a week where you're getting three meals a day you know Monday through Friday so when you say one meal a day that's typically a dinner um, they can choose. They have the option to choose, but uh, we offer we offer lunch, dinner entrees as well as a few breakfast options. And when they get a meal, they're getting one one dish, or is it one a, serving? <laughs> okay. One dish. One dish. Okay. So, is it possible to get kind of appetizer, main course, dessert, three courses, uh, three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, dinner? Or? Three meals a day, um, and then we do offer uh, lactation cookies and snacks as well on the side. Okay, and. Obviously micronutrients, so they're, they're giving the mothers what they want. Mm -hmm. Are they pleasant? <laughs> what do you mean? Are they pleasant? Are they nice? Is the it, moms? Is it, no, 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 the food. Oh, the food's delicious. Right, but what I don't, you know, it's yeah. one thing to say it gives you everything you need. So does a, so does a protein shake, but you have right. to kind of swallow that down with a, with a pinch right. nose and, and hoping it, you know, you don't have to get to taste it. Yeah, well, I, my background, I'm, I'm also a chef, so the dishes are chef designed. They, we use a lot of interesting and innovative seasonal ingredients, things like rose petals or marshmallow root, um, things that are health supportive and unique and exotic. Um, you know, we'll use dates and pomegranates and all kinds of great fiber and fruits and vegetables. So the dishes are very interesting and very flavorful. 
use a ton of digestive spices, um, which help mom to assimilate the nutrients as well as uh, make you know, digestion easier in her system after birth and easier for the baby. Uh, but they also taste great. So. And what's your most popular dish? Um, our lentil loaf, our mom's lentil loaf, is a, is a favorite. It's delicious. It's topped with an heirloom tomato jam. We serve it with braised fennel and, and we use that cashew scallion mashed potatoes. Um, people love that one. We do a pumpkin lentil chili. It's a favorite. We use a lot of bone broths in, in some of our cooking. So we have a bone broth risotto with black truffle. Everyone loves truffle. That sounds delicious. Say, say yeah. one more time. Bone broth mm -hmm. risotto with? Black truffle and black. summer corn. And what? Summer corn. Summer corn, black truffle. Mm -hmm. Sounds delicious. What about for those people who who like their pizzas and they like their kind of, yeah. you know, they, 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 yes, by all means, let's eat great food from mm -hmm. Monday through Friday, Friday, Friday right. for the sake of the baby and so on. But do you guys have anything that's slightly more indulgent or well, it, it sounds actually quite indulgent? It is. Our, our, a lot of our, our dishes are a lot, despite being very healthy, they're a lot heartier than some of the other healthy services on the market. Um, and they're designed to be comfort foods and comfort dishes. So I'm a firm believer that to get people to eat healthy, it has to taste tastes absolutely awesome. So that's what we focus on. So we focus on um, you know, taste as much as we focus on health. So a lot of our dishes, we do things like a tikka masala, we do like lamb koftas with a, with a date quinoa. Um, we'll do different variations of like a veggie burger. Um, you know, we don't outright do pizza. We don't have dairy in the program, um, but we try and find ways to reinvent comforting classics that mom might be craving. Okay, what about desserts? Uh, we do lactation cookies. We don't offer additional desserts with the program okay. anymore. Um, but that might be something we bring back in the future. Okay. So you're 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 the chef. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how did this? How did Barley and Oats get started, and why did it get started? Did you just yeah. sort of wake up one day and decide to? Well, I was in culinary school when I got pregnant. Um, my background before that had been managing e-commerce for a fashion company, and I had been a, a buyer for a while for Macy's, which most people know. Um, and I you know, went to culinary school nights and weekends knowing that I wanted to start a business in the food industry, something um, to get people to eat healthier. Um, like I mentioned before, I really like inventing, reinventing comforting dishes to make them taste great so that people are like, oh wow, this is actually healthy, but this tastes so good. Um, I, I love hearing that from people. It inspires people to eat healthier. Um, but anyway, so when I got pregnant, I, you know, I got very interested in um, pregnancy and postpartum nutrition. I, I should mention the culinary school I went to is the Natural Gourmet Institute. <laughs> and it's a health supportive cooking school. It was the first one in the country. And basically a third of our courses there are nutrition. Um, so we are, we're taught to obviously be great chefs, but also to, to cook foods in a way that are, that are better for the body and better for the planet. Um, so with that in mind, I started doing personal research into pregnancy and postpartum. I found this, this huge wealth of knowledge and uh, all these traditions in other cultures um, and ancient traditions around food and, and mothers and saw that that was something lacking here. Um, I also thought to myself, well, my husband doesn't cook, I do all the cooking, there's no way I'm going to be able to keep that up, you know, those first few weeks postpartum, and I, I was like, well, is there somewhere I can order food that, that meets my standards and, and what I'm looking for for my body? So I started kind of poking around and I couldn't find anything, um, you know, takeout options really weren't healthy enough, the, most of the meal delivery services weren't fully prepared, and I, I knew I wasn't going to have time to cook them. I had tried some of them, they took too long, um, and then some of the fully prepared services just either you know, weren't safe for pregnancy or they weren't really nutritionally dense uh, for the postpartum and I, and I wanted this, you know, very nutritious, wholesome food for myself and my baby. Um, so I started asking other moms if they were interested in something like this as well. I sent out a big survey, I got over about 100 responses um, from anonymous moms in the city and it was overwhelming. 96% I mean, of them said they wished that they had had a service like this when, when they had their baby or, or when they were pregnant um, and that they would absolutely recommend it to a friend. So to go for it. Um, basically, at, at, when did you yeah. This? So at this point, uh, I was about eight months pregnant. Uh, I think I was eight. I was eight months pregnant when I um, incorporated the company's name and started doing kind of like the web development and recipe testing and all that stuff. Um, so let, so let me get this straight. The core business model is predicated upon the fact that mothers have no time. Right. And then, and yet they need micronutrient, but delicious comfort food yeah. so it gives them what their body needs and what the baby needs but also is wonderful right. delicious and so on um, you eight months pregnant also on bed rest I should mention also on bed so rest, I was wheeling around decide, the kitchen <laughs> decide to start creating meals for 50 100 a thousand other mothers mm -hmm. not not just yourself so mm -hmm. some women can't 
do what they need to do for themselves. Well, obviously mm. they're not necessarily gourmet chefs, but you you decide while pregnant yes. that you're going to go do it for a thousand other mothers as well. Yes. Isn't that somewhat insane? Was it, like it was a, a little, yeah. <laughs> you know, there was every other day I was like, should I be doing this? Maybe not. Um, but I mean, at that point I was on, I was on bed rest. You know, I was like, well, what else am I going to do? So I'm wheeling around the kitchen, recipe testing. I don't know, um, be, be healthy, <laughs> look after yourself and the baby. What um, else am I do? I'm going to start a big company. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I, you know, I had the baby in April, and I took a little time off after the baby, and then. In August, we kind of really hit the pavement. Uh, I sent out a, a beta test at the beginning of September. I lined up a commercial kitchen. I had you know sourced all the ingredients. I had all the recipes developed. And in, in September, we sent out our initial tests and then opened um, to the market in beta. So um, we're coming out of that right now. Um, we've gotten a lot of feed, great feedback from people and refined our model to kind of design it more towards what our moms are looking for and what they need. Now, knowing a little bit about your business, one of the things I find really interesting is you went through this process of, of testing mm -hmm. where you, you you almost had an absolutely unique menu mm -hmm. uh, on a daily, weekly basis, right. and you went through multiple iterations mm -hmm. of recipes. Um, and that was almost, in the beginning, part of the business model. Right. It was like never the same thing twice. Right. But you started getting feedback from consumer, you know, from consumers that certain things they absolutely adored, other things mm -hmm. they loved, but mm -hmm. there were some things they just adored. Right. Um, have you refined that business model in the sense of focusing in on those things yes. that just more and more people were telling you are right. your, your best things? Right. So we felt when we first launched, uh, we were offering our moms seven courses a day, five days a week. It's more like a personal chef service. We were giving them all their meals and snacks for the day, and it was great. And that's definitely something mom needs. But you know, snacks might not be something she needs from us. It's something she can get from the store. You know, um, maybe down the road we offer it as well. But what she, what they really loved from us was the dishes, was the entrees. You know, these hearty dishes that they couldn't find anywhere else that were super delicious and nutrient dense. Um, you know, over like the hummus and, and the chips that we were giving her on the side. So we decided to really focus in on those dishes. Uh, that way, we could really ensure the best quality and make sure that we were spending our time developing these dishes instead of spreading it over. Um, all of this other stuff, and we've had a great response. I mean, we've, we've continued to grow, um, and, and and our moms love love them. They can't find them anywhere else. So. Yeah. So so, what's next for Barley and Oats? What's what do you think the next twelve months is all about? Yeah. So the next twelve months, uh, really growing our users. Now that we kind of have focused in on what she wants and what model uh, we're going to pursue, um, we're going to look to then now start bringing in more users. Um, making sure that we create a scalable infrastructure so that we can ensure that our quality remains the same as we grow. Um, and then from there, looking to expand uh, regionally. So we just signed up with a new logistics partner that expands our reach quite a bit. Um, we're going to be able to start shipping to Connecticut and all of Westchester and certain areas of New Jersey, um, some of the suburbs where our moms move to after they have the baby. Um, and then hopefully within a year, you know, we can we can expand even further, you know, down the East Coast. So right now, you guys are specifically Manhattan, Manhattan, Brooklyn, um, Westchester, and Jersey City. Jersey City, and and in the next three to six months, you think it will be? We'll definitely be Connecticut, um, and probably further into New Jersey. Okay. We okay. might. We're looking into options to passively um, expand, like up to Boston and down. Why is I mean, given given you know, Mr. FedEx or Mr. Right. GPS, can get things overnight and so on. Yep. Why is this not something that uh, is sent to California so, or to, right. I don't know, wherever? We're looking at that now. Um, we just have to do more testing on it to make sure that the food will arrive in the best condition and quality, especially if we move into summer um, with heat and everything. Right. Um, especially with pregnancy, there's a safety concern. You know, you want to make sure that the food you know, is, is kept cold and the temperature is proper throughout. We know that other companies do it, so we know it's doable. We just have to do a little more testing to get, our, get ourselves there. Okay. I think Gigi would be a good person to, while, while we're talking about it, I think Gigi would be a good person to hook up with. She, she, she went through that whole process. Yeah. She started out as kind of a, a, a cold chain. Okay. But I'm not sure whether that's, yeah. that's a route. But anyway, just a thought yeah. for later. Okay, so, so, in, so in the next 12 months, it's about building your infrastructure, making sure you can maintain the quality that is just an absolute mm -hmm. uh, central part of mm -hmm. your offering. Right. And then expanding into new geographies. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Um, so, what about you? How is your role going to change? Yeah, so that's been um, now that we're starting to grow, um, we're starting to bring on a team. So, 
figuring out how to delegate, where to delegate, um, creating that infrastructure, because of course, as most entrepreneurs probably know, when you start a business, you're doing everything, and you don't necessarily create a manual to you know onboard people. So kind of trying to get that stuff in place now, backtrack, make sure that we have systems in place and, and procedures to follow so that when we bring people on, you know, they can kind of start becoming part of the, the process um, easily. Um, they're not waiting on me for everything. So my role is going to become more managerial. Um, you know, ideally I'll come out of the kitchen, I'll set the overline strategy for the recipes, um, but we'll have a head chef in there who's doing the R&D, who's managing so the, the staff. has the same passion for Correct. Yeah, definitely. Good, good nutritious, mm -hmm. uh, micronutrient dense, etc. Right. Um, and then we'll be hopefully bring, you know, we have a head of user experience now who's going to be heading up branding and marketing for the company. Um, so I over, will be overseeing that as well. And, and my role will be more big picture, big strategy, you know, deciding where we go into, what the strategy is there, additional product lines down the, down the road. Okay. So one of the things I've been wondering as you've been talking is you started the company eight months pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, you've had an intense... I mean, your son's 12 months now? Yeah, just turned a year. Hey, happy birthday to your son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you've had an intense 14 months mm -hmm. uh, where you've been developing as a mompreneur mm -hmm. as well as a mother. What 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 has being a mompreneur taught you about being a mother or vice, or vice versa? Yeah. Because um. you've got to kind of, you've got to figure out how to do both and how to, yeah. what's important about both, right? Yeah, it's definitely made me, um, I mean, first of all, I never thought I could work as, as hard as I do now. Um, it's amazing what you can learn to juggle if you just try. Just being a mother, so yeah. a bit like that, right? Right. Um, it's definitely challenging, and there's definitely a bit of guilt that goes with it sometimes when you're away you know, from your baby, but I've definitely learned that it's quality of time over quantity, and um, you know, I always make sure that I, you know, I reserve time at the end of the day to eat dinner with him and give him a bath and put him to bed. Um, that really makes a big difference when I'm able to be home and do, do that. It, it really helps. Um, Did you think that being an entrepreneur or a mompreneur would give you more time to, to, to focus on, on the child? As, it like helps for example, you focus. For example, my, my wife yeah. had to go back to work after some right. period of time, which means you know my daughter was in daycare or with a nanny or, or whatever, right. like most of the time. Right. Um, did you hope that by starting a business you'd actually end up one way or another getting more, more, time? more choice, at least choice of time? Yes, but I know that it's going to be down the road. So like in the <laughs> beginning, of course, it's going to be less choice of time. And then hopefully, you know, we get the business to a point someday where I have a little bit more flexibility. Um, but it definitely, it definitely forces you to focus your time a little bit more. Because um, you don't have the luxury of, of just doing things whenever or... Um, hmm, that's a really good question. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. Uh, I wonder if, given that you're run, you know, riding two horses effectively, being mm -hmm. a great mother and being a great entrepreneur, whether it's had an impact on uh, the role your husband plays. You said he didn't cook. Yeah. Before. He didn't cook before. Does he still not cook? He still doesn't cook. Um, <laughs> okay. He's good at ordering ordering food. I mean, we eat barley. You know, it's a lot, but. Um, Yes, I mean, he's become a lot, I mean, he's very helpful with the baby. Um, he's been helping with it around the house more, you know, he definitely, he definitely helps out. Um, he was an entrepreneur as well, so he's definitely a little bit of a, what are you doing over there, kind of, you know, <laughs> a little, he tries to dip his hands in when he can, um, and I welcome his help. But. I wonder if at any time in the first, in this last 12 months, there have been times where you've thought, damn, this is tough. Oh yeah. Am I really? Am I? You know, am I completely insane? Are there any particular stories where you were at a, a kind of a, a, an inflection point of okay, is this thing really going to happen? Yeah, should I mean, should I do it? Should I not do oh it? Gosh, probably at least twice a month. Um, no, I, th I mean, I think it's very normal as an entrepreneur to go through that, especially I think having a, a small child. Uh, there is definitely times where I've been like, you know, what am I doing? I'm doing this to help other moms, but I'm you know, forsaking my own time with my son to to kind of create this for people. Um, and I try and just think big picture. Uh, you know, it really helps to hear feedback from our customers that they love the service. We get so many nice notes from moms that say that they're, they're you know, so grateful that we exist, that they, you know, that they couldn't find anything like this, and now they feel supported. And you know, we get we get really nice feedback, and that kind of helps me see the bigger picture of what I'm doing. Which you know, the goal is to help 
help women and help moms um, have a higher quality of, of life with their children, uh, both in health and time. Um, so that's very helpful. My husband is very helpful. He's super motivating. You know, he was an entrepreneur. He went through it. He had his highs and lows. So anytime I come home and I'm feeling kind of beat up or like, you know, something went wrong or we had, a, you know, an unhappy customer, that happens too. You know, sometimes, you know, as an entrepreneur, you feel like everything's your fault or everything, you know, you should be able to prevent everything, um, which of course isn't realistic. Um, and he's, he's a great voice of reason, you know, so that helps. Okay. So, um sounds like if, if anyone's listening to this and they're interested in getting great food, whether they're either A, trying to have children, mm -hmm. B, have found out they're pregnant, yep. they, is there some kind of laundry list the doctor hits them with in terms oh, of yeah. nutrition and so on? Yeah, this, you go for your first doctor's appointment to confirm the pregnancy and you leave with a, with a sheet of what you can and cannot eat. Um, and it's very stressful, especially if you're someone who doesn't cook, um, you know, you may not know, any, you know, ideas for other dishes that you can eat. That's what I heard from a lot of moms. They felt very limited because they're not, you know, very creative in the kitchen and maybe the dishes they were used to eating they couldn't eat anymore. You know, they can't have, or the dishes they were used to buying they can't buy anymore, like sushi or um, you're not even supposed to get, you know, a prepared salad from the deli. Um, so there's a lot of limitations there. You start to wonder about every cheese that you're eating and you know, if your meat's cooked through enough and if the eggs are pasteurized and it can get very stressful. So you know, one thing we offer definitely is peace of mind. We know that everything we make is safe, safe for mom for pregnancy, and just you know, even beyond that, designed for pregnancy. It sounds stressful. It sounds. It, it sounds like not only do mothers want to know they're not risking the, themselves and their baby mm -hmm. by having, as you say, uh, in, incorrectly cooked food or, right. or whatever, but there's. It sounds like there could be a, a, a kind of a line of guilt running through things in terms of wow, you know, I've. I've got the responsibility of this baby, mm -hmm. and it's now my responsibility to make sure that I'm making only great decisions yeah. and good decisions. And if I don't, because I, I don't know, I feel like a scoop of hardened dust or something, mm -hmm. uh, then I'm being a bad. Yeah, there's a lot of mom shaming now, which is hard, hard too. Um, but there's definitely a lot of guilt. I mean, you feel. I mean, you're growing a human inside you. You feel like utterly responsible for this child, and you know there are definitely things that are out of your control, and there are things that are within your control. But I think. At the end of the day, it's all about balance, and you shouldn't beat yourself up if you're horribly nauseous and all you can stomach is a bagel. Cause, you know that happens to the best of us. That happened to me. Um, so we try and just support our moms in the best way that, that we can, and if, you know if we can we can help them nourish themselves in an easy and delicious way, and that's what we're out to do. Um, but definitely stay off Google because that will make Google? you feel pretty bad when you start googling whether or not you should have eaten that uh, oh, cheeseburger. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so it sounds like one of the things that keeps you going is getting letters and yes. and testimonials from customers mm -hmm. telling you how good the food is, how much they've loved it, how they you know they're recommending it to their friends and that sort of thing. Um, how how do people engage with you? Is it kind of Instagram? Is it Twitter? Yeah. Is it just regular letters, notes, emails? Mm -hmm. Most of it comes through email. Um, you know, we, we do have a good Instagram following. We get engagement there, but we get we get a lot of letters from our customers via email. And where do people connect with you on Instagram and those kind of places? Mm -hmm. So we're Barley Notes Mama. That's our Instagram handle, and then on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest, it's Barley Notes. So Barley Notes Mama, M O M M A. M A M A. M A M A. Mm -hmm. Mama. Mama. Okay, because in America it's mom, it's M O M, right? Typically, you talk about mom. It's mom or mama. Mm -hmm. Okay, mama. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay, so people can connect with you on Bali Notes Mama, M A M A on Instagram. Mm -hmm. They can connect with you on Twitter and Facebook at just Bali Notes. Yep. Or it's BaliNotes.com. Correct. Um, is there an email? Or is that just yeah. like in, info at? Or? Um, yep, there's support at BarleyNotes.com. Um, or they can always email me directly, Ashley uh, Noe at BarleyNotes.com. What I'd like people to do who are listening to this is if you're a mother um, and this sounds like something you want to try, whether or not you're in uh, Manhattan or uh, New Jersey or where, where else is it? Oh, uh, Brooklyn, right? Mm -hmm. um, whether or not you're Chester. in any of those, and Westchester, in any of those four, four areas, um, shoot a note to support at barleyandoats.com or to Ashley without the E at barleyandoats.com and just let her know that you want to try one, you know, try some of her meals. She may not be able to get them to you but you know, when she's trying to figure out where next to take Barley and Oats, if she gets enough emails from people in a particular 
uh, region, maybe there's something she can do about it. Yeah, definitely. All right. Yeah. I want to thank you for your time today. Thank you. Is there anything else you want to say to moms or to uh, other entrepreneurs out there? Yeah, just find something you're passionate about, and um, if you ever have a rough day, just remind yourself of your bigger vision. Yes. Cool. And that goes for being a mom, too, because you don't have to be a mom entrepreneur to have a rough day as a mom. <laughs> All right. Thanks very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you.